The town of Roding is located in Bavaria in Germany. The community covers an area measuring about 11,300 hectares and has approximately 12,600 residents. The northern part of the old town is situated right next to the River Regen. It regularly bursts its banks during lengthy periods of heavy rainfall. As a result, large parts of the old town are inundated in extremely wet conditions. Extensive structural work is currently being completed between the banks of the Regen and the old town as part of the urban redevelopment scheme. As this is only possible in conjunction with the planned flood protection measures, the Water Authority started building flood protection barriers in 2013. Drainage systems are located both in front of and behind the flood protection barriers. In addition to the flood control measures, extensive work on redeveloping canals is taking place in order to meet the flood protection requirements. This is designed to prevent water reaching the center of town during floods. The most extensive measure involved upgrading the so-called Northern Relief Canal, which passes beneath the flood protection barriers. The planning and building supervision work was handed to the Volker & Partner GBR engineering office in Germany. It's about 400 meters long. The hardening process takes place through eight installation sections, each measuring about 60 meters long. The heaviest flexible pipe weighs about 12.5 tons and hits hauled into position using a winch. The construction work started directly where the existing rainwater relief canal flows into the River Regen. The shape of the concrete channel measures 1200 by 1100 millimeters in the first five sections and 1200 by 1000 millimeters in the last three. Following an inspection and assessment of the damage to the canal, the experts discovered serious fragmentation, concrete corrosion, leaks and exposed reinforcements. A decision was made to insert the UPGFK Alpha Liner made by Reline Europe in order to repair the canal permanently and quickly. The first building section involved the area from manhole 301308 to manhole 301309. The consortium performing the building work initially set up a winch which was to insert the liners with a tensile force of up to 10 tons on the wire rope. Meanwhile, the conveyor belt for the liner assembly work was positioned at manhole 301307. The first thing to do was to insert some sliding foil to help with the insertion process. This makes it easier to slide the liner in, provide protection against any damage and creasing. Using the winch and wire rope, the stable foil was inserted through the existing canal. Following this first step, the specialist set up the conveying device for the liner. The liner is made of non-corrosive glass fabric, which is impregnated with unsaturated polyester resin. Once it has hardened, a 19 mm thick supporting laminate layer creates a load-bearing pipe construction that is able to cope with flood waters.
The length of this first repaired section was about 61 and a half meters. Precise folding was important during the insertion process in order to ensure that the liner would later unfold using compressed air. The end of the liner slid through the folding device about 90 minutes later. The liner now lay beneath the grass-covered area between manholes 301308 and 301309 at the point where the canal flows into the River Regen. After inserting the liner, the packers are put in place. That is to say, the liner has to be lifted. A steel dome is placed at the first and last manholes in the excavations. The liner is fixed to this with tightening straps so that it absorbs the pressure with which the liner is then set up. The liner is then pressed against the pipe wall through the setup pressure. The string of lights is inserted via a pipeline and is hauled to the upper manhole. The liner is then hardened at a predefined speed. The initial working stage involved inserting the packers after cutting off the ends of the liner. The liner was then well sealed and a pipeline inserted. Before the air could be blown in to set up the liner, the strings of lights had to be inserted in the pipeline. Using a setup pressure of 35 millibars, the chain of lights was then inserted in the liner, the packers were closed and then installed so that they could not slide out. The liner was gradually moved into position at a working pressure of 350 millibars using air. The liner then fits tightly in the old pipe without any ring gap or creases. The last stage involved pulling the row of lights through the liner that had been set up. During the UV string of lights return journey, the lamps were lit, which triggered the thermally supported reaction in the liner. During this stage, the strings of lights move through the liner at a speed of 35 centimeters per minute. The two UV strings of lights each consisted of six lamps, each emitting 1,000 watts. That is to say, the total UV performance was 12,000 watts. Hardening the liner took about three hours. Then it was possible to dismantle the packers and remove the inner foil. The hardened ends of the finished liner were cut off and removed. The remaining seven repair sections were upgraded like the first one, initially with sliding foil and then with the relevant liners. This took place during the next few weeks. The lengths varied between 22 and approximately 69 meters. The work was very challenging here in a densely populated area and it was necessary to closely coordinate matters with the ongoing flood protection work taking place in the town of Roding. The redevelopment work had been largely completed by the end of 2014 and the flood protection system in the town of Roding was then ready for use. By selecting this method of renovation, it was possible to complete the work quickly and cost-effectively. Any adverse effects on the local residents caused by the work were kept within tolerable limits.